Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host and meteorologist, D.T., from Weather Risk here in Central Virginia, talking about This Week in Weather. I am also, in case you did not know this, your captain of chaos, your chronal confusion, and your commander of catastrophe. So let's talk about This Week in Weather coming up, and a lot of events coming up the next two weeks here. Maybe I should change it to This Week in the next next this next two weeks of weather because really that's what i cover really about the next two weeks so anyway we have several events coming up here now last week i did not do an update because i was busy working on the spring forecast for my clients but we'll resume doing these uh videos again right to the spring and summer into the hurricane season uh every wednesday evening um so hopefully this will continue okay anyway so upcoming here we have this first the november the march 24 25 event, which is mostly an Ohio Valley low, uh, significant threat to the southeastern U.S. And I'm talking about severe weather. When I use that term, in case you do not know, there are some, some people out there who don't know. Severe weather is talking about severe thunderstorms, high winds, um, uh, hail, and tornadoes. That's generally what the term means. Then we have another event, March 28th, 29th, which is also going to be an Ohio Valley low pressure area of some significance. Also going to be a threat to the southeastern U.S. with severe weather. And it could become a New England snowstorm. We're going to talk about that in some detail. It's getting late in the season, but you know, late March in New England is not out of the question at all. Then March 31 to April 1, another major low, but this one is going to be in the plains in the Midwest not the Ohio Valley, New England, or the East Coast. And then finally, we have another one here, uh, also Upper Plains, Western Great Lakes, April 3rd, 4th, and 5th. So a lot to talk about. Let's go right to it. First, we'll take a look at some recent conditions with the ENSO regions. And, um, you know, this is as of, uh, I guess, a couple days ago, but uh, the numbers have really haven't changed. What's happened here is that if you want to take a look is that the values um, continue to warm in region 1.2, which is the region right off of South America. Let me pull up an arrow here so you can see what I'm talking about. There you go. With this region right here, you can see the valleys are really quite quite warm. Um, this is really quite warm. Now, uh, somebody pointed out on Twitter, and I believe this would be correct, whenever this region 1.2 is at 28 degrees centigrade or warmer, and you have a El Nino, every time since 1900 that's happened, you've ended up with a strong El Nino. Now, I don't know if that's going to hold this time. Just because it's happened in the past doesn't mean it's going to happen now. But whenever reach 1.2 is 28 degrees centigrade or warmer, and you have a developing El Nino, then you end up with a strong event. As you can see, official region here is now almost neutral, this area right in here. And you can see everything is rapidly warming. Okay. Now, if you look at our latest projections, this here is from the IRI, the summary here for March, early March. You can see... Well, that's things I want to point out here. Now, the dark blue line, which is this line here, you see it right here, the dark blue line, okay? Um, that is the CPC official ENSO forecast. Now, if I blow this up a little bit, let me see if you can show this a little bit so you can see a little more clarity here. Okay, here you go. Now, so this here is the dark blue line, right? And that's CPC. Now, these are the dynamical models, and these are the statistical models. So there's, I think there's 24, 25 of them all together. Um, if you look at the dark red line, this is the uh, consensus of the dynamic models, which is usually much better. And of these vast majority of models, you can see that all of them have, by the time we get to July, this here is 0 0.5, and this is 1.0 centigrade. This here is moderate, this is weak, this is moderate, and up here is strong. Now, none of them have the going to strong yet, uh, these models. But you can see the red line does get to 1 degree centigrade here by the time we get to July and August into the hurricane season. Now, as we go into the autumn and the next winter, it keeps it at one, around uh, uh, three quarters to one degree centigrade above normal, maybe one degree centigrade above normal. So, which would not be horrible for next winter. We'll get to that at some point, but I just want to point this out. Now, other models are taking this into strong. The Australians and the European have this becoming a high level, moderate, or a strong, even a strong El Nino by the middle of summer. So, we'll see if that happens. I don't know if it's going to happen yet, but again, like I mentioned, when this area here gets to be 28 degrees centigrade and you've got El Nino, it always becomes a strong one. We'll see. All right. Uh, moving on to something more uh, sub-seasonal here. This is the MJO forecast for the next two weeks. And uh, 
as you can see from uh, right now, as we are in a phase, this is now the March 20th, but right now we are in a phase two on both of these models. You can see this is the GFS, here's the European. And what happens is it moves into the neutral circle here. And then as we go into early April, it comes back out into phase seven. Now, early April takes us a little further than beyond, but the, the trend in when you go to phase seven here, here in April, what happens is you end up with a rather cold pattern for the Midwest, the East Coast, the Plain States, the Upper South. Everybody's cold east of the Rockies. That's the first thing. And second, phase seven is also a very wet pattern on the eastern third of the country. No doubt about that, especially, you know, everywhere east of the Mississippi River, but especially the Mid-Atlantic, Ohio Valley and the southeastern states. So in the early April, it does look like we will go into, remember, this is through April. This is March 25 to April 6th, but April 7th, as you can see, and I'll even blow this up, you can see it a little bit, a little more detail. Let me blow this up here for you, you can see it. Okay, you see how in April 7th, 6th and 7th, it goes into phase 7 of both these models? So when it does that, that's going to change the pattern in, in April, make it a cold, wet April, at least for a good portion of the month um, in the central and eastern portions of the country. So be, be prepared for that after April 7th. All right, in the meantime, what's going on recently? Well, this here is the upper air pattern, 500 millibars. This is as of March 20th. And notice the huge upper low here off of California. Another monster bomb. These systems are coming down from the Gulf of Alaska in the Northeast Pacific and going into the West Coast in California. Look at this bomb. Wow, this thing is huge. Let me blow this up a little bit so you can see it. Look at this baby, huh? Wow, just a massive system. And what it's doing, it's ejecting these waves of low pressure eastward. Now, we still have some blocking at the high latitudes, but as long as this feature is here, obviously, you're going to get a ridge forming in the southeastern states, and that is going to happen again. Now, for the time being, relative to normal, we are running pretty cold. This is over the last five days, and you can see the temperatures are way below normal, and that we're getting into late March, and normals are going up every day now, but still, you can see the dark the greens here. This is 11 degrees, 12 degrees, the little white patches in here in Tennessee, uh, 14, 15 degrees centigrade, same thing in the Dakotas. So it has been quite cold uh, relative to normal in this kind of pattern. All right, uh, now here's the first event. This is March 24, 25. So the trough comes eastward. You see what happens? The big upper low, which is here, decides to come eastward. And it, as it does so, it causes low pressure to form in eastern Oklahoma, Arkansas. <clears throat> At the same time, you're gonna get a ridge forming in the eastern United States. So, you know, here in Virginia, the southern states, low Ohio Valley, mid-Atlantic, it's going to get very warm here uh, as we go into the weekend, uh, into, the, into the weekend, in fact. And that low pressure develops, there it is, becomes quite strong, very significant warm sector here, big high to the north, keeping the cold air. So the usual warm front right through the mid-Atlantic in Ohio. That front, as this low goes northeastward, it's going to pull the warm front way north. The whole thing's going to come way north. Um, but this is a big rain event for the Ohio Valley and Delta, and this is severe weather. Look at the winds here. Uh, this is uh, uh, 700 millibar winds on Friday night going to Saturday morning, right through the Tennessee Valley. That white color here, 75 knots, okay, at about uh, uh, 10,000 feet. So this is quite a bit of high winds here. So this has a real severe weather potential, I think, in this area. All right. Then um, <clears throat> if we go into... Uh, the next event, and as, well, this continues. Let me say this is, again, March 24, 25, 26. If we go into the next event, you can see that um, it, it's, it remains uh, uh, fairly potent. The system moves off the New England coast. Um, so there was some concern earlier that, um, you know, this was going to become a, um, you know, a, 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 a snowstorm for New England. There may be a transition of snow here in northern New England. Uh, or at least some intervals of snow, but this is, system is going way far north, and this ridge is very strong here, uh, right here. You can see this, and yet also you see how the trough is coming in. So, again, an another piece of energy. Look at this thing. After this one goes in, and then this one comes in, there's another one on the west coast. And that when you get these big lows like troughs like this, you keep getting these ridges. So these lows go way up through the Ohio Valley and New York State up to Montreal, and everybody. And the East Coast, even New England, gets gets rain and snow out of it. So that's really that's really you know what the problem is. And <clears throat> there's no reason to think that's it's that you know this pattern just shows no signs of changing. It just does, doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> you know, it, it can it just continues to. It's a very locked in pattern. I got to tell you, um, I'm I'm impressed. <laughs> I really am. 
So um, then the severe weather threat, uh, you know, if you look at CPC stuff, they do have an enhanced area here uh, in the Tennessee Valley. Um, you know, they do have an enhanced area here. So, you know, if you, I didn't post the CPC forecast for, uh, uh, for, uh, for Friday, but you can see it's quite um, significant Thursday, Friday into Friday night. Okay. Then after, okay, so we look at this in some more detail just to show you what happens here. Okay, so here is the one for uh, Friday night, for Saturday. So the primary low is way up in here. And we get a little, second little low in Virginia, but you can see it's way north. You see it in Michigan, it pulls all the warm air northward. I mean, you get a little mixed here in northern New England, but that's about it. You know, I mean, hell, even Toronto goes over to rain. I mean, good God right and when the secondary low takes over this thing is way too strong this is way too weak it's just it's nothing so don't worry about it it's not going to happen at all okay all right so the next event here and also in week one which is 28 29 to 30 i mean this is the beginning end of week one beginning of week two so what happens is this big western trough moves inland so this feature finally let me bring this forward here oops bring it forward here a little bit so you can see it Okay, this trough finally moves inland, and when it does, it's down in the Midwest here, and that causes another rapid cyclogenesis in the Delta, which develops in the Ohio Valley, Tennessee Valley, becomes a big-ass storm. Uh, the models here, you can see the upper low and the main trough, they kind of phase, and as a result, you get these two lows becoming one big system here. Cold air coming down from Canada, this is seasonally, this is rather cold air for this time of year behind it. But look, there's another West Coast trough, yay! I mean, these things just, well, it doesn't die. Well, it's, well, it, we, we can't get the, we can't get this that trough energy to, to take a break for even two days on the West Coast. It just won't. And uh, it's quite impressive. So if we look at the winds here with this one, now here we're getting some winds. Of course, this is now, you know, um, how far out in time is this? This is uh, the 28th. This is, you know, day five and a half, day six. Again, we have a nice wind streak here at 700 millibars of around 50 knots. It's not that strong yet. Uh, the, the highest winds are going to actually occur on the east coast and that's why the system bombs out. So what happens here is, okay, uh, here we have the primary and the secondary. And the primary low goes into Ohio. The secondary low begins to take over. And because the trough is so strong, um, the southern low takes over here very quickly. And as a result, we end up getting this. Now this is the European for midday here on uh, Wednesday. You can see the taking over the primary low is dead the coastal low is taking over here heavy snow in new york state northern half of new england mostly north of i a 90 okay and then um <clears throat> there you can see just bombs it off the coast quite impressively here i'll blow this up for the european look at this right wow now this is a little deceptive because you, you know if you look at the soundings here you're 32 degrees at, at or 34 degrees at worcester and it's snowing well that's not going to do it in march i mean it's just not so what happens is the snow uh, uh maps are kind of off let me show you what i mean this here is in the upper left this is the european from 12z on wednesday next uh, two day snowfall map right and you can see here if you blow it up you, the over two feet of snow in north central massachusetts southern vermont the mountains southern uh, the mountains of vermont central and southern new hampshire and then even albany 14 inches here in albany um you, you know um and this and you can see the elevation effect again northwest connecticut getting up to 10 or 12 inches here the connecticut, connecticut river valley nothing and you know this is an elevation snow and looks looks impressive but the problem is again if you're 32 to 34 degrees in worcester you're not going to end up with 18 inches of snow it's not going to happen, not in March. So that's that's the problem. So the the this here in the south of Interstate 90, essentially south of the Massachusetts Vermont, Massachusetts New Hampshire line, this is all bullshit. This is not going to happen. Indeed, if we look at the European Ensemble, now this is a reasonable wet snow forecast for the 29th to the 30th. Okay, no, you're not going to see two inches in New York City. Okay, you're not going to see two inches in Allentown. Okay, but in, in upstate New Catskills, Adirondacks, interior Connecticut, Massachusetts, this is possible. Three, four, five, six inches of snow. Yeah, okay, that's reasonable. I don't know if it's going to happen. I'm just saying it's reasonable. All right, okay. And then here, this is the GFS doing the same sort of thing. This is the GFS, and uh, this is, blow this one up here a little bit. Bring this up front so you can see it. 
Now it has huge snows in western New York State, you can see here, and then um, and then into uh, Catskills and Adirondacks again. And it's got 11 inches in Boston. Bullshit, not happening. Um, you know, uh, 10 inches, 12 inches in in um, in Worcester. No, no, that's not going to happen here. Uh, a couple inches in New York City. No, uh, 11 inches in in, in uh, Poughkeepsie. No, no. Okay. Uh, 16 inches and in, 15 inches in Binghamton. I doubt it. It's not out of the question. I would doubt it, you know, but okay. The mountain mountains, Poconos, maybe. Okay. But this is, again, this is generally overdone because especially in the South side, all the Southern portions, the low level temperatures are above 32 degrees for a significant portion of the storm. And in March at 33 degrees, you're not getting accumulating snow during the day. That's not going to happen. Not at 33 degrees, not at 34 degrees. It's just not going to happen. Not enough to give you 12, 14, 15 inches of snow, 8 inches of snow. Okay. And if we look at the ensemble, the GFS ensemble is doing the same thing the European is. Let me blow this up. You can see it. Uh, bring front. There you go. This is reasonable. So again, here's the European ensemble. Here's the GFS ensemble. Very reasonable. No problem. I think that's a reasonable solution for what happens on the 29th and the 30th. And then if we go into week two, the pattern repeats. Oh, look at this. Another massive trough on the West Coast. So when was the last time we saw that? Oh, about two seconds ago. Okay. We have a nice block in Greenland, but look at this trough here. It causes another ridge to get warming east of the Mississippi River. And this is going to come east right along the difference between the trough and the ridge and become another Midwest storm. And look at the ridge developing here this, uh, over the East Coast again. This is April 1, April 2, going to get quite warm east of the Mississippi River here. And these storms are going to, the big lows are going to roll right up into the, the Ohio Valley and, and into the Midwest. So, you know, that's, that's, that's the next system here. And there's even one beyond this one. Again, this low pressure area here on April 1st is going to come out April 3rd, 4th. The models have a huge low in the Plain States and the upper Midwest. I didn't post a surface map. But it's there, it really is, and uh, it's quite impressive. So, um, you know, it's a very active pattern, and it's, we keep getting these monster troughs coming in. I just, I just can't see any break in this pattern. Um, so, we'll see what happens here. But the other thing is, when these troughs come east, you get this very strong wind field. You know, as the trough tries to push against the ridge, the, the mid-level winds at 850 and 70 millibars they compact. So you get these really strong jet streaks, and they produce a lot of severe weather. So uh, this pattern has a lot of potential as we go into April and May to produce big severe weather outbreaks. If this pattern continues with these monster troughs coming in from the west coast through the Rockies into the plains in the Midwest and pushing up against the southeast ridge, this has a lot of potential down the road if this keeps up and later on in April and May. This is meteorologist DT from Weather Risk. I will see you over on the Twitter page and over on the website and the Facebook page.